Hi everyone. Where have I been? What have I been doing? Have I actually done any sewing? I thought it was time we had a little catch up. So let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name's Laura and I'm the Carpe Diem Stitcher. So um, it's been a few weeks since my um, last vlog uh, and I wanted to start by saying thank you so much for all the lovely comments that I got um, on my last video which was a look at my top five favourite t-shirt patterns. Um, a lot of you seem to really enjoy that, found it helpful, suggested other t-shirt patterns, so I've been looking at um, some of those, so that's been really interesting. So um, I will definitely try to do more of those types of video um, later, in the, later in the year, so um, that's something that I'm really looking forward to, and I hope you are too. So, where have I been? Well, I haven't actually really been anywhere, I've just been working really hard in April and so I just really um, didn't have that much time for sewing as you'll see in a minute um, and I so I didn't really feel that um, there was much for me to come on and, and, and vlog about really so I thought I'd wait and um, let a few things happen. I have been thinking about sewing, um, have made a couple of purchases as you'll see um, so it's not there's been nothing going on, but I haven't been as productive as maybe I'd like. Um, so it's all started fine. So I started off um, cutting out my um, mates for um, Selfless Sew April 22, which I vlogged about a couple of times ago. Got them all cut out um, and that was kind of getting towards the Easter weekend. And I thought on the Saturday, I thought, great, I'm going to do some sewing. And then I went down with some sort of food poisoning or something. So I got nothing done on the Saturday, did some on the Sunday, did a bit more um, work on the cutting out and then went out for the day on the Monday. Um, and then, and then yeah, you know, it was back to work and I've been working quite late in the evenings. I've even done a bit of weekend work, which I do try not to do, but I had a hard deadline for some data to be submitted last week and I did get it done but as a result I was finishing work quite late at night and I didn't really have the energy to sew um, and one of the things I've really learned is for me if I sew when I'm tired it's a really bad idea and even in the bits I did do um, I was cutting out a t-shirt for my husband so all these things are cut out and for me um, it's sad that I didn't get anything done in time to get them in for um, selfless so April 22 I finished one mate but I finished it today which is 1st of May so obviously I won't be entering it for the competition but everything that I said I was going to make I was going to make anyway and wanted to make for the other people that I'm sewing for so it's not it's not a disaster that I didn't get them done they'll get sewn um, during the course of the next month so it's 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 absolutely fine really so I'm a bit disappointed but it's it's not the end of the world but yeah, so I just didn't get done as much as I wanted. And when I was cutting out this t-shirt, as I say, um, I actually managed to cut out part of the UV to top because I got the pattern pieces muddled up. So I've now got a beautiful black piece of UV to t-shirt. So it's a really good job I like that t-shirt because it will get used. I'll just find some other bits of fabric to pair it with and I'll have a t-shirt with, um, you know, a black. I can't remember if it's the front or the back now, but it's fine it's not a problem but um yeah i mean if you're tired then sewing can sometimes be a massively bad idea and it certainly is for me so i have got one thing to show you um and if you've um seen my instagram if you follow me on instagram i'm also at the carpe diem stitcher so i have got one of my makes that was um originally going to be for selfless sew april 22 to show you and that's the shirt that I was um, making for my husband and I've got it here I'm just trying to get the best way to show you so here it is um, so you'll see it's it's a shirt with a camp collar 
and it's made in this um, fairly amazing, fairly bright um, Doctor Who fabric, which I'm pretty sure probably started life as a curtain because it was a piece of fabric with a rough edge along the top as if um, curtain tape had been off. And it was in a box of fabric kind of given to me by um, a nice neighbour in the village. Um, so that's how it started out. It is quite um, a fairly stiff fabric, so it's a bit like sewing with quilting cotton or something like that. So it's absolutely fine. Um, he really likes it. I'll pop up a picture of him uh, doing some twirls in it. I, I think he quite enjoyed it. It was a bit self-conscious, but I think he quite enjoyed it. And you'll see that it um, fits him pretty nicely actually. So um, I did mention the pattern before but it's this one, it's the Simplicity S1957 and I made him um, this view, the plain view, view B um, and I actually made it, I think I said that I made it in, I was, I was going to make it in a size 42 and it actually wasn't, it was a size 38. Um, because I'd cut the pattern pieces to fit my dad and I knew that I needed to make the same size shirt so I knew it was the right size but it was actually a size 38 um, which is for chest 38, waist of 32 and hip of 39 um, so the smallest size is a size 34 um, which is chest 34, waist 28 and hip 35 um, and it goes up to, um, on the larger of the two pattern sizes it's one of the ones that splits down the middle um, it goes up to a 52 which is 52 inch chest 48 inch waist and hip of 53 so yeah so that's what I made him I did make one or two alterations to the pattern so um, I didn't do a pocket you'll see on the line drawings um, can't see very well on there but basically it's it's the short sleeve version and the only difference from this is that I haven't done contrasting colour. Um, he didn't want a pocket, which is a good job because there was absolutely no fabric to make a pocket. So he couldn't have had one, even if he'd really wanted one, but he didn't. So that's absolutely fine. Um, he didn't want the vents at the side. So I just continued the seam all the way down, sewed it up to the bottom. And I didn't hem it in the um, conventional way with the, the, the turn up of the hem and the um, cutting out of the bit of the facing and then turning it um, turning it to the, you, you do it on sort of right sides together and then you turn it out and that forms the beginning of your hem. I didn't do that because um, my husband's six foot four um, so again I couldn't have lengthened the pattern because there wasn't enough fabric to do it but what we decided to do was um, cut down on the hem um, at the bottom. So what I did instead was I did a bias binding hem on it. Um, so I'll just show you. So you can see that's the that's the right side and then on the wrong side it's got um, this bias binding with planets on which I thought was um, really appropriate given the Doctor Who fabric. And this is um, bias binding from the Specky Seamstresses shop. Um, that's Laura, um, the specky seamstress, who um, started a shop a little while ago and then put it on hold, but she's just opened up again, so I'll pop the links below. But it's beautiful, it's made of cotton, and I think it just kind of really sets the, um, really sets the garment off. So that's what I did to the bottom. And um, the other thing I did slightly differently, I wouldn't say I changed the pattern, is I didn't um, turn the collar under in the middle. I just overlocked it because I followed a tutorial, shirt tutorial by the Stitch Sisters and um, that's how they have you do the collar and I actually find it um, a bit easier I think. Um, and also I knew, I think I mentioned this in my previous vlog, there was a bit of a problem with the um, matching of the dots, there's a bit of an error on the pattern so I decided it was safer just to do it without trying to sew between dots and leave gaps and stuff just to put it on and then just and then just um, overlock it at the end so I just top stitched all the way sewed all the way around um, to attach the collar and attach the facings so yeah so I'm really pleased with it um, husband's really pleased with it as well so um, I hope you like seeing that I'm not quite sure when he's going to wear it 
Um, and the other thing, if you didn't see on the video, is um, I put these bright yellow buttons on. That was his choice in the end. He decided he wanted yellow buttons. And I just bought them from a local kind of, almost like a general stores um, in the town where I go to my chiropractor. So I don't think it's online or anything, but yes, so I've just got those and they seem to show it really nicely. So um, that is my one make um, for the for the month of April. Finished it off literally today, so um, that was that. So really pleased with that. I've got all these other things cut out, ready to make. So as I say, not a disaster, had to get the work done. This happens really rarely. So it's, 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 as I say, it's not the end of the world, it'll be fine. So hopefully, now that data's submitted and out of the way, things will kind of go back a bit more towards normal. So that was the first thing to tell you about. Second thing is that um, you might remember me saying a little while ago that I was supposed to be going to um, a show at the NEC called Sewing for Pleasure with a friend. And then um, we basically got... Um, how can we put it, sidelined by COVID. Um, and in the end, um, we couldn't go. So, uh, but it's on again in June. Um, I think it's the last weekend in June. So we booked to go um, again and they were doing a special offer because I bought tickets last time. Um, you could get tickets for £2.50 if you were quick. And we were quick. So we got tickets for £2.50. So that was great. And it makes up a bit for having lost um, the money that time. So hopefully I shall go armed with my selfie stick and I shall try and take some video and um, I'll do a bit of a vlog about it when I get back and let you know how that goes. So really looking forward to that. Makes up for the disappointment of not having been able to go a few weeks ago. So yeah, of course I spent the fabric money, didn't I? But you know, there we go. Okay, so before I carry on, I'll just tell you really quickly what I am wearing today. And what I'm wearing today is another of my Tilly and the Buttons Nora tops made in um, fleece. So as I think I've mentioned to you before, um, so do have a look back at my previous blogs if you want the details. I just basically size up to a size four so that I can get my neck through the neckband. And then I just make it with um, straight sides. Um, if I tilt the camera down, you'll see uh, just straight sides ending about my hip. Um, and this is made in um, a kind of unicorn cuddly fleece, which was made for a particular event, um, but um, probably tends to get worn a bit less often. Um, so I don't get mistaken for a 12 year old if I try to go to a bar. Uh, so, and at the moment, um, I'm about to go on holiday. And so, you know, when you go on holiday and you're just kind of wearing all the clothes you're not going to take. And I'm sort of at that stage at the minute. So, um, yeah, um, that's what I'm wearing. Uh, but I love it because it's really warm and cosy and snuggly. And it's not really that warm today. So, um, yeah, it's fine. So that's what I'm wearing. And then I've got. A couple of things to show you um, which I've bought. So um, the first thing is um, a book and um, if I rewind a bit there is a podcast, I don't know if there have been any recent um, episodes but it's by two um, women called the Clothes Making Mavens and they used to have um, a guest slot on um, somebody called Barbara um, Imodi and she used to do kind of like a little a little kind of slot about um, you know sewing wisdom and she'd been sewing for years and um, while I was listening around the time I was listening to the podcast because this was oh, probably a couple of years ago now she brought out a book um, so this isn't the one I've just bought um, but I bought it at the time it's called Sew and it's called the Garment Making Book of Knowledge, uh, Real Life Lessons from a Serial Sewist. And it's probably not one of those books that you would sit and read straight through, but it's quite useful if you just want to look at um, bits and pieces. So it talks about how to measure yourself, um, how to pattern match. I think it's got um, 
making clothes out of knits. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for the index. So choosing and cutting fabric, um, the gear side of sewing, you know, what do you really need and what is a nice to have? Um, yeah, so I bought this, um, as I say, when it came out, um, bits about fitting, how you alter a pattern to fit, how you pick a pattern, yeah, all sorts of things. So I got that and as I say, you don't, it's not the sort of book you sit and read all the way through, but it's one of those ones that it's quite nice to dip into every now and again. And so um, then I discovered, um, probably about six months ago, that she'd brought another book out. And so I put it on my wish list, but didn't actually buy it. And then um, decided in the middle of the month, I think particularly because I was feeling sorry for myself and I wasn't getting that much sewing done. So I thought, right, I'm just going to treat myself. So I bought this um, second book, which is actually kind of bigger, it's different shape, and it's called Stress-Free Sewing Solutions, um, and it's called A No-Fail Guide to the Garments for the Modern Sewist. And what this book is, is um, when it talks about fail, it's followed all instructions, let down. So the idea is that this is where you tried to do something, you followed the pattern instructions and somehow it didn't work. And so what it does is it says, OK, this is what it will look like if you've got that problem. And is there something you can do to fix it quickly? And is there a way that you might change the way that you do that thing in order not to have that problem again? And when I made my denim skirt, um, a little while ago, around the time I first started vlogging, I had a problem because I could not get the zip properly to be snug against the waistband. And I tried looking on YouTube and I tried Googling and I just couldn't find it. And in fact, it's in here. And, you know, sometimes when you buy books online, you can do the look inside. And it was talking about how to avoid that gap. And that's actually why I bought the book. Um, but it's got all sorts of things like, you know, bagged out, knitted neck bands and how you can fix those and and I just thought it might be useful and interesting so I've got those two books if you would like me to do a bit more of a more detailed review look through of those books do pop a message in the comments down below and I'll happily do that as um, a separate video I'm very happy to do that um, so yes yeah, so that was one thing I bought and then the second thing I bought was a Birder Star magazine. So this was April 22's Birder Star magazine. And I only got this probably about 10 days ago, something like that. Um, and I was leafing through it. And one of the reasons I bought it is because it has a shirt dress in. And as you know, I've been thinking about making shirt dress. So I was looking at that. But in the end, I've decided I'm not going to make that because the placket kind of goes on a slant so it goes down there and then it picks up there so it sort of zags, zigzags across and then goes down there and I kind of thought as a sewist you know that you've done it right but I just thought if somebody else sees that you might think gosh that looks a bit odd why don't the bits match because it's so subtle that it almost looks like it might be done wrongly so I ruled that out um I did think if I had more time, I might try and do it so that the 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 difference between the two bits of placket would be more pronounced, but not at the minute. But anyway, I um, carried on flicking through it and I found this T-shirt. So Joe of So Joey, who is running a T-shirt challenge next month, if you're watching this, I saw this and I thought of you. Um, so this is definitely going to get made. You'll see it's just got this beautiful sleeve detail. I think you probably need to make it really in a kind of viscose jersey to get that kind of um, not a defect. But I thought that was fantastic. So um, really, that's the main reason I bought the magazine. So that is definitely going on the list and I'm definitely going to make some t-shirts in June. As I say, hopefully the workload will calm down a bit, so I'll be a bit more back to normal than I have been. 
So just thought you might like to see that. Again, if you want me to do a flick through um, a Vogue magazine, a Vogue Birder magazine at any point, um, I'm happy to do that. So that's what I've been up to. That's why I've not been around. Um, in fortunate, unfortunately, in terms of sewing, I am now about to disappear off away for a few days, not going for long. Um, but we're just going off um, camping. So we've got electricity on site, so we've got a holiday list going. And I kept adding the sewing machine and my husband kept taking it off. So I put the overlocker on and then he took that off. So we've been having a bit of a laugh about it. In reality, of course, I'm never going to take a sewing machine camping. If I was in a caravan, I might, but probably not in a, in a tent. Probably a bit risky. So um, I'm not sadly going to be with my sewing machine um, for a few days, but then hopefully I will be back and um, able to do some sewing. I've got a little bit of time between um, coming back and going back to work. I've got a day or so. So I'm hoping that I will be able to um, finish off my selfless sewing makes and then I really want to start thinking about some of those other spring sewing plans I had so I'm really keen to get going on something like a pair of trousers and also to finalise what I'm going to make for the engagement party that we're going to in the middle of June and that's the other thing I've been doing this month I've been spending bits of time you know winding down in the evenings looking at patterns and things online and I keep looking at the um, Friday Pattern Company Hughes dress and I'll pop a pick up there. And I keep thinking that's really pretty. And um, I'm trying to be strict with myself and I'm trying to say, no, Laura, you've got to make something from an existing pattern that you own. But I just really like it. So there's quite a high temptation to um, make that instead. So if you've made the Hughes dress, please tell me what you think of it. Um, I'd be really interested to hear and if you think it's something that is relatively easy to make for an engagement party. Okay, so um, short and sweet from me this week, but I kind of really wanted to come on and just um, have a quick chat and a bit of a catch up. Um, and as I say, I'm really happy with the shirt. I have got another one for me um, cut out, which I've had cut out for ages. So that's also something I want to get on with in May. Um, and yeah, so a bit quiet on, on the um, actual sewing front. But as I say, and you can probably tell, I've still been thinking about sewing. And the other thing that I am being allowed to take camping with me is my crochet. And I have actually made some progress on that crochet sweater that I showed you where I'm making one in the same pattern as I've already made. It's called my favourite sweater, um, Katie and the Squid. Um, so I'm hoping to progress that while I'm away and maybe even get it finished. So yeah, so I'm hopefully I'm going to get some time to do some crafting and just relax and go and do a bit of exploring and things. So yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, and I nearly forgot the one other thing that I did, which wasn't sewing related, but did have interest if you are a sewer, is um, we went to... The Harry Potter studio tour down in Leavesden on Friday because it was my husband's birthday and it was a big birthday so we um, I'd got the day off work and we decided we were going to go down and do that which from South Wales is quite a hike but anyway um, and it was really worth it and lots and lots of behind the scenes stuff but there were a few things to do with sewing so they had um, a toile of one of the um, costumes. So I'll pop a picture up here. I took a photograph of the toile and the actual outfit. It was from, I think, the Goblet of Fire. It was um, one of the outfits of one of the other schools that takes part in the Triwizarding Cup. So there was that. And then a bit further round, there was a picture of the, um, one of the, no, it wasn't even actually a picture. I took a picture. It was one of the sewing machines that I think they must have used to make the costumes and this whole load of thread. So I took a picture of that as well and I'll pop that up here. So that was really nice because it and they had a lot of the costumes on display, um, lots of other things as well, lots of the animations. Um, I can really recommend it. If you're a Harry Potter fan, I think you'll really love it. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a nice day out. It takes about 
three hours or so to get round. Um, so yeah, so that was the other thing I got up to, which wasn't sewing related, but did hold interest for a sewist. So on that point, I'm going to leave you and hope to get this edited and up um, today, which is Sunday 1st of May, so that hopefully, um, if you're getting some sewing in tomorrow, and I hope you are if that's what you want to do, then you'll have a chance to um, maybe watch me a bit while you sew. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you to... Um, my lovely subscribers who've signed up um, subscribed already thank you also to the lovely viewers who pop messages on my um, channel asking if I was okay because I hadn't uploaded for a while so hopefully you're reassured I'm absolutely fine just been really busy so I hope you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up if you did um, and if you'd like to consider subscribing that would be great too and if you click the notification bell you'll get a message when I'm back with you again which hopefully won't be as long it may not be next weekend but hopefully by the weekend after um, I'll have another video up so it's lovely to be back talking to you hope you have a lovely long weekend if you're here in the UK and that you've been getting some sewing in and wherever you are I hope you're well and I'll see you again soon bye for now